Hi everyone, Anthony Morganti here. Over the past year or so, I've received several requests from photographers asking me if I could demonstrate how to edit an image that was taken either at night or during the blue hour. I actually have several videos on YouTube demonstrating how to do this, but those videos are pretty old and they definitely need to be updated. So, over the next several months, I will be doing some videos demonstrating how to edit images taken at night and images taken during the blue hour in several different applications. In today's video, I'm going to demonstrate how to edit a night image in Luminar Neo. The reason why I'm starting off this mini series demonstrating how to do this in Luminar Neo is because I also want to replace the sky. And it's super easy to replace a sky in Luminar Neo. So that's why I chose Luminar Neo. Also, the reason why I want to replace the sky is because very recently, uh, OccuDrone came out with a new set of skies. They're called Astrotopia skies. And those of you that watch my videos know that I'm always saying that OccuDrone sells the best third-party skies on the market. And Astrotopia skies do not disappoint. They're images of the night sky, and they're absolutely gorgeous. In the description below this video, I'll have a link to OccuDrone's website. You could check it out. They currently have a pretty big sale going on. You could take advantage of that. Also, I have a link to Skylum's website. I'm creating this video just after Black Friday, before Cyber Monday, and Skylum also has a Black Friday, Cyber Monday deal going on. I'll have that listed in the description below this video. Now, as far as editing a night image or a blue hour image, um, really what you'll find is your editing isn't that much different. There is one thing that I'm going to show you in a minute that you may have to do. But other than that, um, I don't think you're going to have to do anything much different than you usually do. Now, as I look at this image, uh, a couple things. I have the moon in my shot. This is an unedited RAW file. This is actually a very old image. It was taken over 10 years ago. And if I replace the sky with the moon as it is, that moon is going to show through. There's nothing I really could do to make it disappear from the sky that I add to it. So what I want to do is I don't want the moon there. So I need to get rid of the moon. That I definitely need to do. Also, the image is a little crooked. Also, as far as the moon is concerned, you'll notice that it's not technically like a, a perfect reflection in the ice. There is the glow of the moon, though, in the ice, so I have to get rid of that as well. And that's a good thing that it's not like perfectly reflecting. You can see the few stars up here. They're not actually reflected in the ice. Because what you fi you'll find is if you replace a sky with either Luminar Neo or on one photo raw where you could easily replace the sky and add the reflection in water. If this were water down here and not ice, the reflection would barely show. For some reason, these applications don't like to add the reflection to water when it's a night image. So I purposely chose this image because there's not water there. There happens to be ice and I don't really have to worry about the reflection. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start with the crop tool. I like to crop early in my workflow. It is crooked, so I want to straighten it. The way I like to straighten it is to open the crop tool and just come off the image to the right. I'll get the double arrow. I'll click with the left mouse button, and then I'll just push it till it's straight. And I'll just look. I'm looking. There's some verticals here I could see in the middle, and I could just make sure it's nice and straight. When I'm satisfied, I'll close the crop tool, and it will commit the crop. Now, I want to deal with the moon and the reflection of the moon. So I'm going to go to the erase tool. I'm going to select. I could adjust the size with this brush, or I could use the bracket key. So the left bracket key makes the brush smaller, the right bracket key larger. And I need to get the moon out of there, plus all kind of the, the rays coming off the moon. Let me go over here and grab this star while we're at it. And then we're going to click erase. And it will take a second or two, but hopefully it will get rid of that. And I kind of left a little bit of a line there. Let's, I left some rays there as well. We'll click erase again. And that looks a little better. And then down here, I have to deal with this uh, reflection. This might be a little more difficult to do, but we'll see what we could do. We'll come down here like this and over and down and around. And we'll click erase. 
see what happens. And we have some lines. I'm going to get a smaller brush. And I'm just going to try to soften these lines a little bit in here. In here. We'll click erase again. Yeah, it looks a little better. And if you look, you know, at the ice itself, you can see that naturally there's a line here. There's a line here. So we kind of know what was there. So when we look at it, we might be a little more critical of these lines, but I think it looks natural. So I think I'm satisfied with the erasure of the moon, even though there's kind of a little spot there, but we're going to replace the sky so we won't see that. And I'm happy with what's down there. Now I'm going to do my typical normal editing. Now this was a raw file and you notice it doesn't say develop raw anymore. That's because I did this erase tool before that. So to get to the develop raw, go to edits and then go down here to develop raw. And when I do, it's going to put the moon back, but that's okay. And when I look at the image, uh, the first thing that jumps out to me is the shadows are really dark. This was a tough way, a tough scene to expose because we have these really bright areas and a lot of really dark areas. So I did my best to try to expose it more in the middle so that I could still open up the shadows and still rein in the highlights. So we're going to go to the shadows and we're going to open those up. And then we're going to go to the highlights and we're going to rein those in by pulling that down. And uh, that doesn't look too bad right there. Now, I'm not going to worry about blacks and whites. Now, one thing I do recommend, and this will be a little different now, uh, that you're working on a night image. This is probably something you wouldn't normally do, is go to color. And because I'm working on a, a raw file, if I go to white balance, I'll have a number of choices in this dropdown. Daylight, cloudy, shade, tungsten, fluor fluorescent, and flash. Go to tungsten. Often when you take images at night, the sky will have green in it, and this one wasn't that bad. But you could kind of get rid of the green and make it look more realistically like it was a night scene by changing your white balance to tungsten. If you're not working on a raw file, you won't have all these options here. So just go to the temp slider and move it to the left. You may want to take the tint slider to the right a little bit as well. But this now looks a lot more natural than it did when it was as shot. So I like that. So we're going to go with tungsten. We're going to close that down. Now, I think at this point, I want to replace the sky. Now, when I come out of edits and I go back to tools, it will reapply my brush that I did. You have to give it a second to process. And then it will get rid of the moon and the reflection of the moon. So I'm good to go. So now I want to uh, replace the sky and I want to use one of these Astrotopia skies. Now, whenever you purchase third-party skies, or if you have your own skies that you took in a camera, you need to install them in Luminar Neo so they're here all the time and you don't have to like find them on your computer each time. So to do that, uh, we're going to go to the uh, Sky AI tool. And I'm going to push this up here a little bit. And you have this drop-down right here, Sky Selection. Click on that. And within that drop-down, you'll have another drop-down. Don't go down here and click on get more skies that will open up your browser and it will go to uh, Skylum's website where you can buy skies from them what you want to do is go to this drop down then go down to the bottom to show custom skies and when you do that a finder window will open up to the folder that contains all the custom skies that you purchased you can see i have a lot of different ocudrone skies i put od in front of it to designate it as ocudrone so when i'm in this drop down over here i know this is a set of ocudrone skies and not skies that came with um luminar neo so when you have your skies just drag them into this folder you can see i have the astrotopia skies there once they're in that folder close that folder down and they'll then show up in this drop down right here. And you'll notice I have that OD in front of it to designate it as Ocudrone uh, skies so they're not mixed up with the skies that come with um, Luminar Neo. I'll go to those Astrotopia skies and you can see there's a lot of skies. If I just want like a star field, I could click on that. It takes a second. It has to map the sky. So you could see it. I added the star field. Here's another one with the moon. Here's another one. I think this is the moon as well. We have this just beautiful colors come through. Here's another one with the moon. But the moon is off the scene. So if you wanted this moon in the scene, what you would have to do then is go to the horizon position and just pull it down. So you get the moon in there. But I don't want that one. But I'm just going to show you a few of them. 
it was a big moon. And uh, here's like, you know, nebula and stuff like that. This, this was the one I think I want to use, but I don't want the horizontal position to be there. There, But anyway, show you more. You get some Aurora Borealis there. Pretty cool. That one's kind of cool too. So we're going kind of a worldly look, but I do like this one. I do want to go with that. So we're going to go with that. Then when you're done, you can close down that drop down and then you could start adjusting it. Um, you could adjust the horizontal position. I think I move it down just a little bit. You do the vertical position as well. You'd see how it, the bottom of the image is right here. Just make sure that it's covering where it needs to cover. You could uh, change the horizontal position left or right. You could flip the sky. You do that often if you're matching lighting from the sun. If it was a day image and let's say the sun was camera left and you want the sky to match that, maybe it's opposite that. Well, then you click flip and it will take care of that. Let's go to mask refinement. This is this part right in here, um, right where the buildings are. You could see how it. you could refine the mask and make it just fit a little better. Could close gaps. It's a really minute adjustment around these edges. Just make sure that you're closing all the gaps well. You could fix any little details with that. You could relight the entire scene here with the relight strength. And this, I kind of think, I feel there would be a glow from the city. So you see down here, it's real dark. But if I go to the left, we kind of get this glow. So I kind of feel there'd be a glow from the city. You could relight the uh, the saturation of that relighting. And if there was a human in the shot, you could relight them as well. The reflection, as I mentioned, it doesn't like to reflect in water on a night image. So you won't get much, even if this were water here, you'd get barely anything there. You'd have to probably move this all the way to the right and you still would barely see anything. So that's just something you have to deal with. And then you have overall sky adjustments. You could defocus it. I'm not going to do that. You could add grain, add haze, you could add warmth or brightness. I'm not going to do any of that. I kind of like it the way it is. So I'm happy with the sky that I replaced. Still not done yet. Now, if I find the need that I need to go back in and adjust like the highlight shadows or I want to adjust the white and black points, don't go to the develop tool here. Go to your edits and go back to your develop raw tool here and edit it that way. But I think it's okay the way it is. I'm going to go to tools though. And what I want to do is there's a really cool tool in Neo called Magic Light. And if I open that up and I take the intensity and move it to the right, it'll take a second to kick in, but you can see what it does with the lights. I kind of like that. So we'll add that, but not over the top. We'll just add it slightly. I think that's pretty cool. And uh, so far, I kind of like it the way it is. What you can do too is at the end, even though you most often use Enhance AI like right at the beginning, you could do it towards the end as well. And sometimes it will add some really cool look. And I like what it's doing here. So it's bringing out everything. That's pretty cool. And there it is. I think there's my edit. So there's before. And there's after. There's before. And there's after. So you'll see editing... A night image is pretty much the same routine you would use if you're editing any other image, except the white balance. You want to get more of a tungsten white balance, so you're going to want to move the temp slider to the left. You could do that with the drop down like I did and just go to tungsten, or you could manually move that um, temperature slider to the left and it will just make it look a little more realistic. And one more time, there's before. And there's after. Thank you, everyone who watches my videos. I really do appreciate it. Talk to you guys soon.